This is the Dairy Brothers Tribecast, a podcast for diehard Cleveland Indians fans. Presented to you by WaitingForNextYear.com. Now, here are the hosts, Matt and Todd Derry. A new week, everybody, and a new edition of the Dairy Brothers Tribecast. We're right here on WaitingForNextYear.com. Thank you for listening and uh, joining us today. Matt and Todd with you. Indians got off to such a good start, 5-2, and two, looking good. Got a huge win on Thursday night with a Karen Chack save in Minnesota. And a statement win. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the bats go completely silent. Not exactly facing big-time pitching either. And all of a sudden, this uh, this team, Todd, uh, the Indians, 5-5, <laughs> five and five, and now staring down the barrel of a, of a Cincinnati gun, you know they're going to hit the White Sox after that. So things aren't getting any easier. Uh, it was a rough weekend for sure, no question. It was gross all the way around. Uh, just when you think you got a little bit of momentum and things are looking good, then they just completely stopped hitting. Like, listen, we've seen many times over the last... Well, the last two years in particular, we've seen many times where the Indians' bats have gone silent for, you know, a few days or whatever. But, you know, there wasn't the sense of urgency that there is now with the short season. And God knows how long it's going to last. But, oh, my Lord. I mean, you look at some of these numbers. I mean, after they after the doubleheader sweep against the White Sox, they scored – they played five games and scored four runs. Yeah, or was it? Four? I mean, it yes, four run, four runs the last five games. They've got the league's worst. The they've got the AL's worst OPS. Yet they've got the AL's best team ERA. And even yesterday, and by the way, we're brought to you by the our friends at the Center for Advanced Dentistry, Dr. Ben Hornstein. And of course, you can follow us uh, on Twitter at Dairy Bros Tribe and and everything else. But Todd, I mean, you know, Savali battled through and did all he could yesterday, throwing over 100 pitches again, giving you a quality start. And look, not every game are these starters going to be lights out like Bieber was on Thursday. You can't win every game two to nothing, and it's starting to come back to haunt them. You got to win a nine-seven game. You got to win a seven-four game once in a while. And other than Hernandez, Lindor, and, and Ramirez, the, the lineup's been garbage. Uh, nobody's hitting. Santana and Reyes, the two Santanas, and Franmil Reyes, they're all trying to hit home runs and stepping in the bucket. Nobody's taking the ball the other way. These other teams are slidering and, and change upping us to death, and yes. we're and, and nobody's laying off. No, the at bats are terrible. That started with Lucas Giolito um, on Thursday. That would be Thursday. Thursday. No, Wednesday. It was Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. Yes, it started with Giolito on Wednesday, and Giolito last year, if you remember, it was the same thing. He did a game plan against. Um, uh, the Indians lineup was don't throw him any hard stuff, slide ups or sliders and change ups. And Giolito is like masterful with his change up. So as as we saw again, he went back to that same game plan on Thursday or uh, on, on Wednesday and the Indians had nothing. And that was the zero zero game that turned into four nothing with Brad Hand, who you know we'll, I'm sure we will discuss, but um that was, uh, you know, th- that became the story of the weekend, basically, is, is these pitchers. There's a book on the Indians, and it's essentially, if you can get through that top three, you know, your, your, your slider, sliders and change-ups, stay away from the hard stuff. And if you can, you know, if, if Reyes and Santana are not doing anything in the middle of the order, it's a real problem. Well, it's such a problem that yesterday, you know, Francisco Lindor got thrown out at second. He was trying to stretch. Oh, God, what was that? I don't know if he was Cadillacing out of the box. It's tough. I mean, they don't give you the same as many camera angles anymore because there's just not as many camera people in the stands uh, due to COVID and everything else. But that made no sense. But then you figure if he slipped out of the box or something, maybe then he should stay at first. But he's trying to make something happen because no one else is doing anything. You know, Mercado's two for 24. The catching yeah, position with Roberto Perez out uh, is an automatic out. I mean, anytime Bo Taylor plays, it's an 0 for 4. You just have to hope he catches the baseball. And yesterday he threw a runner out, which was nice, but he's an automatic out. I mean, the, 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 the offense has to wake up. And, and give Rocco Baldelli credit, the Twins manager, he knew what to do yesterday. They're holding Homer Bailey back for a bullpen game, but he knew if we start with Clippard, 
Maeda was throwing slop the night before that we couldn't touch, and he said, I'll just throw Clippard out there, and I'm sure they won't touch that slop either. And they didn't, and it set the tone for the rest of the day. I'll tell you what else, a couple of, from yesterday that, that would bother me. Well, first of all, and this is another story for another time, but someone needs to explain to me how in 2020, and you know, I understand it's COVID and whatever, how do you not have ca- one camera going directly down the line on both lines? How hard is that? Right? There was the du- the, the leadoff double. By Kepler, yeah, inning, yeah. By Kepler, which landed, you know, the, 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 the best camera angle they had was, you know, kind of overhead, but it wasn't directly down the line. And, you know, a, a, a camera down the line, you would have seen it, but you did not see it. You know, you know, you couldn't see if it, it, the chalk flew or or not, and they got a leadoff double out of it, and then, and then the umpiring yesterday was really terrible. I mean, that was. Yeah, it was the. I think that, it was, was the, the the three two the three two pitch to. I don't remember if it was Hernandez or Ramirez. It was called a strike, and it wasn't it ended an inning. Maybe it was Santana, Carlos Santana, at that end of the eighth, I think, or. Maybe it was the end of the game. I don't. I don't. Even, I don't even remember. But there were the. It was the end. No, it was the end of the eighth because, uh, uh, and it was I. Uh, it was the end of the eighth, and I can't remember who it was. But in the ninth, it was you know it was a, a, a pitch that was borderline, and Carlos, who never complains, turned around and looked, and he's like, "Really?" It was like the pitch was about five feet low. <laughs> it was, it was oh, absurd. and then and then Karen Chack in the in the uh, in the eighth with Nelson Cruz on had him for strike three. And that was called a ball. And it's like, come on, man. I mean, just inconsistencies. And you're right. Some of these umpires are going to be rusty. They haven't been out there either. But yeah. I don't know what the approach is. We've had these Ty Van Berkeley talks before. <laughs> a lot of, lot of, lot of, uh, of fire Ty Van Berkeley tweets going on, I saw. It's every year. It's every but, year. But I was just going to say, uh, th- th- we've been hearing that since, you know, for the last five years. Number one, that's not going to happen. And number two, you know, I don't know if you could. I mean, we've been how many games they played? Ten. Ten you know, games. Five, five, five and five. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 what are you going to fire the hitting coach after ten games in a sixty-game season? It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And and I say this as someone who is not a Ty Van Berkeley fan. Like I've, I mean, I've always Van Bo. I've always thought that this team needs a some different younger blood on the staff. Because it's, you know, obviously, I mean, Millsy not there this year, but you know, everybody on that staff, uh, Sandy's the youngest guy on the staff. I think everyone else is old. So, so it's, you know, that's another conversation for another day. But they, they, they got to get going. And and uh, I don't know, you know, Tito's going to try different things, obviously, because he has so many different options. Um, I mean, we, it looks like we're seeing Bradley Zimmer basically as he's basically become an everyday player. I think I'd like to see Jordan Lupo get more regular at bats. Also, um, Oscar's really struggling right now. Mercado, he's he's really really looked bad. He's he's been good in the field. I'll give him that. He made that made that great play um, crashing against the wall uh, against the that was that was that was against the White Sox um, this week. Uh, I, I, but the problem is. In a sixty-game season, you can't sit around and wait for these guys to figure it out, and you got to come up with some some different options. So maybe we see more of Daniel Johnson. Maybe we see more of you know. Uh, 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 maybe we see Bradley Zimmer pretty much as an everyday player the rest of the way. I, yeah. I don't know where they go because the, the, the right now, like you said, the, the, the infielders Sans Carlos, who's not who's, who who will be fine, and you're not replacing him. It's it's the you know it's it's Frankie J Ram and, and Cesar Hernandez are the only ones who seem to be doing anything whatsoever, and uh, oh it was Cesar Hernandez by the way who was the one who struck out on that last yeah in, and he's got he's got a really point. he's he's got a really good eye and uh, yes, that was that was disappointing look look when you have a number five hitter as feared as Fran Mil Reyes is or supposedly as feared as he is uh, he had you know one ninety four. No home runs, two RBIs, and an OPS of 445 is not going to cut the mustard, as we like to say. I mean, I'm ready. Five hole Freeman. I mean, I'm ready to call an emergency meeting of the Red Line Club here uh, <laughs> on Fran Mill Reyes because this is uh, this is not good. And you know, you get to the bottom of that lineup, like you said. I mean, Mercado's not hitting. I, I mentioned the catching before. 
they got to get Roberto healthy uh, and get him back. But it's not going to get any easier. I, I'll go through the pitching matchups this week, but you know, even starting tonight, I mean, Sonny Gray's an ace. He's really good. And hopefully playing two games in that band box in Cincinnati where a couple of pop-ups can get out will we'll give this team some confidence. Uh, Tito uh, might not be on the trip. He's got a minor gastrointestinal condition. So when it rains, it pours right now. You know, you, you, you mentioned the catching position. And, uh, again, Sandy Leone is you know, he's a veteran backup catcher, but – you know, what we've forgotten and what we've gotten spoiled uh, about for all the, you know, the last how many ever years was Jan always hit pretty well for a catcher. Roberto was really, really good last year. And, you know, now you're looking up and you got you got these automatic outs. You're, you're, you're totally right. I, I like Sandy Leone and, and Bo Taylor has done a nice job defensively. They both call a good game. I mean, obviously, the pitching's not the problem. The framing has been good. I mean, they've both been very good. I, I, I actually really like Leon as the backup catcher. I mean, if, you know, Plowecki was not great last year, and I thought Leon was an upgrade. K P. Yeah, but, but what, what about when, P? What about P K? The brand? Sorry, <laughs> I'm just I'm trying anything here. Come on, it's so good. <laughs> anyways, anyways, I, I, he's an ideal backup catcher, but you know, it's it's just like I used to say this about. Uh, one of my favorite ex-Indian bench players of the after ball era, she- uh, Shelly Duncan. Shelly Duncan, when they'd play him. The dunk tank? He'd be- yeah, he'd only play when, when he'd come out there and he'd play against lefties once a week. You know, he was pretty good. And off the bench as a pinch hitter, not bad. But then when Shelly Duncan became an everyday player, you were like, this guy, this guy's playing every day. This isn't, yeah, it's the same thing with Sandy Leone. He's a nice backup catcher when he only when you only have to see him once or twice a week at the most. It's not so bad. And the other problem is Roberto's out. There's no there's no rehab games. He can't go to AAA and get some at bats in. You know what I mean? So now he's going to have to come back ice cold, and he was cold to begin with. So it's 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 not an ideal situation at all. Matt and Todd with you. It's the Dairy Brothers Tribecast right here on WaitingForNextYear.com. Of course, you can listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to the show, Spotify, any, any anywhere that you get your uh, podcast. We appreciate you listening. Indians yesterday losing uh, 3 to nothing um, and getting shut out again. Or, I'm sorry, 3 to one They've been shut out uh, now way too many times. They've scored four runs in their last five games. Uh, and even when they win games, like Thursday night, it had to be a nail-biter with Shane Bieber going eight. And we haven't even touched it. We're 12 minutes into this thing, Todd. The Indians have their next Corey Kluber. I mean, this freaking Shane Bieber is off the charts, setting records, most strikeouts in, in the first two starts in the history of the game. Um, what can you say about Thursday? Man, that was so much fun. That was surgical. I... Uh, I got a text from Ags in the middle of the, of the game, and he's like, "Do you believe what we are watching here?" He's like, I, "He said, I, we, if you think about it." And he brought up a great point to me. He said, "We grew up, you know, seventies and eight and eighties, and it was all terrible. We had no. I mean, who was the best pitcher of our youth? Tom Candiotti, best starting pitcher. If you, uh... if you had to say pre Jacobs Field era of our, even even throw in the nineties." We thought Cliff Charlie Lee, Cl- was Cliff, a good Cliff Lee or Cece? No, no, I'm, t- okay. talking about I'm, pre, I'm talking pre I'm before then. I'm talking when we were I'm talking when we were kids. Let, let's go ninety one and earlier. Who was the best Indians starting pitcher Len, of our youth? Len Barker? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Len Barker was good for like a year, right? I mean I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to look it up, but but these are the kind of people we're talking about. Greg Swindell. Uh, yeah, Swindell, Candy Yeah, Candy These these are the guys. Not exactly household names. Like if you went around and asked, you know, people, uh, you know, under the age of uh, Rick Sutcliffe, Rick Sutcliffe, people are they would know him. Rick Sutcliffe. Yeah, sure, sure. But what we've seen between Corey Kluber and Bieber and 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 CC Sabathia winning a Cy Young and Cliff Lee winning a Cy Young, Bieber's so good. We, we could be talking about four Cy Young award winners in like a you know fifteen twenty years fifteen year span. And Kluber won twice and probably should have won three times, which is pretty amazing. But Bieber, the way he paints, 
Did you see, by the way, I don't know, and if everybody has it, MLB Network had a tweet that they put out. Mark DeRosa did about a five-minute breakdown. That was great. On, oh, on Bieber. And it was the at-bats against Josh Donaldson on Thursday night. It was incredible. He just... He's painting with his fastball. He's got a knee-buckling break, breaking stuff, and no one knows what's coming. And th- the frustration coming out of Josh Donaldson, who's an all-star, former MVP, just says it all. I mean, this this kid is absolutely something special, and we we are lucky to have him. And this is again goes to the player development, especially on the pitching side. For this team, this organization, the development, the development of the pitchers, the starting pitchers in particular, is incredible, and that's the sole reason the Indians can maintain uh, uh, this run that they're on. Basically, been been a you know a good team since 2013 with a small payroll. It's incredible, and Bieber's you know just the latest guy. Yeah, I know. You can't say enough about what the the arms are doing. Uh, You know, you talked about Brad Hand and his struggles the other day. You know, we could make the argument. I was listening to uh, Zach and TJ on the on the Selby Godcast uh, talking about well, bringing Brad Hand in, bringing your closer in. You know, in the top of the ninth in a tie game, which I don't like, but you're right. Pitching's pitching. You got to have you got to be able to get outs no matter what the situation is. He's not been good. You know, he's from Minneapolis. It's kind of ironic he didn't pitch the entire weekend. I don't know if that was by design or what. He, he, you know, Karen Chat came in Thursday and was fantastic in the save situation. But for all the complaining about the bullpen early, you know, Simber's been hit a little bit, certainly the hand game on Wednesday. You know, the Indians have one of the t- best ERAs in the game and the best in the American League. You have to score some runs. You've got to get, you know... You got to get the out. The outfield has been a disaster from an offensive standpoint, um, and they're trying everything. They're playing everybody. They gave Daniel Johnson a shot the other night to play. He was swinging over every breaking ball known to mankind. By the way, where are you? You sound like you're uh, in, a, in a wind tunnel. Oh, sorry, I didn't mute. I'm, I'm I'm walking back in. I had to walk the dog. The dog. The dog did not give me good timing today. So how I how is Coco doing? Keep keep it keep it moving. Uh, Coco's doing great. No, this is this is real radio. We gotta we gotta dive into what you're doing. Unmute. <laughs> I'm unmuted now. I'm unmuted. I should have I should I should have muted when I was walking. I did. I, no, I like it. I, no, I, I'm. I'm now back inside. I like it. So you'll be able to hear me much better. It was okay. fun. No. Pro, proceed. <laughs> I was just saying. I was just saying that the uh, the outfield's been a disaster. And you know, it's funny. They they had this whole thing about Reyes playing in the outfield because that's where he had success in San Diego. And now as a DH, it's not exactly hitting. So I, I just you just don't know what to do and whether or not to play him out there or not. But that's a huge. You know, when you're four and five, they're just swinging through everything. Santana and. And Reyes and Domingo Santana, he had a nice day last Sunday. But other than that, um, uh, nothing nothing that he... And if he's not hitting, and if Domingo's not hitting, you can't have him out there. Right. He, call, he, in the first inning... Cost you a run yesterday. He, 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 yeah, exactly. You and I, was, you texted me this when it happened. There were two outs for Mitch Garver. He hit a pop-up, uh, short right field. Carlos was on a dead sprint from first base, running, you know, looking backwards over his head to make the play meanwhile domingo's got to make that play he doesn't make it ball drops foul next pitch garver goes deep and that's that's a run right there and and as we know with the indians offense (laughs) every single run counts no there's no question about it matt and todd with you dairy brothers tribe cast indians We'll be in Cincinnati for two. The games are all weird times. It's like 640 tonight, which, by the way, it's on MLB Network, so I don't have to plug the laptop into the big screen, but that'll be good. And then um, 610 on Tuesday. Then they come back and play Cincinnati for two more. I watched. Uh, I did some scouting. I watched a lot of the Reds this oh. weekend uh, against the Tigers. The unnamed team. The unnamed team, yes. Well, I can say it now because um, they played them, but you know, Cincinnati – no oh, joke. No, the executive producers on vacation. No, no, no. <laughs> he'll be listening. Uh, no, Joey Votto. By the way, he's might have COVID. <clears throat> uh, they, he's been put on the DL, so that's a bit of a break for the Indians. But um, look, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, you've you've got to score more runs than this. Uh, league's yeah. worst OPS is not going to get it done. They're not driving the ball over the over the wall either. Uh, it'd be one thing to be like, oh, well, at least they're hitting some home runs. They're not even doing that. Um, 
And so that's that's the bottom line. Four through nine is this got to get better. It has to. The, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, here these stats. I wrote these stats down. These these basically tell the story. Now, if I could open up my notes app on my phone, there you go. So they scored four runs in five games since that doubleheader. They're thirtieth in baseball in runs. They're twenty seventh in batting average, twenty eighth in OPS. So that tells you how. But. They're second overall in ERA. They're second in K per nine innings, and they're first in WHIP. They're not walking anybody either. That's all. That's the other thing. Nobody's being walked. And as bad as Brad Hand has been, you know, the the the, the rest of the bullpen's been really pretty good. I mean, I'm not, I I can't complain. I really liked that Karen Jack got that save opportunity, and I think that you know it wouldn't shock me one bit if. Today is August 3rd that we're recording it. I wouldn't be shocked if Hand had another bad outing or two that by August 15th he was supplanted. Now, you know, we, we, we'll, let's go back to that, that game. Zach Plesak pitched eight scoreless, yeah, 11 Ks, no walks, and he was unbelievably good. And at the beginning of the year, when we, we talked about, you know, they got six starters and what are they going to do when they have all these other young arms that are on the come and they're trying to figure out bullpen. You know, I, I said on this podcast a couple of times, I thought Zach Plesak's stuff was going to play really well in the pen and maybe they, for a year, throw him out there and put him as a back, uh, uh, a back end of the bullpen option, which I don't think is going to happen because he's so good. I mean, that White Sox, that White Sox lineup is lethal and he just... I mean, the, so is the Twins, and, and the way our pitching was just mowed them down. But but in that spot, and you, you talk about, you know, Tito went to hand, 0-0, zero, zero, tie game, ninth inning, you, you know, you go to your quote-unquote closer. What you should be doing there, I, Tito, Tito had the right mindset, which is in a 0-0 zero, zero game in your home park, you want to go to your best reliever, who, you know, the majority of the time is your closer. The problem is hand's not even close to being your best reliever. And uh, uh, the WFNY's own uh, Michael Bodie put up a, a, a he has, he has a, um, a, a tweet thread about hand and the velocity and he, he's got a, it's it's you can't deny that he's not throwing the ball. I mean, two years ago when he was so great, he was throwing the ball ninety three consistently. Now he's like topping out at ninety one, and when when it's just it's just not working. And I, I just. I don't know how much longer you can, in a short season, you can trust this guy in a big spot. And the problem also becomes he's got to pitch to three batters every time. And if he's not getting outs, and he just he's just going to become a mop up guy. And you know he's got a club option. The Indians have a club option for him at like ten million next year. I would put that at zero point two percent chance. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean he's. It's going to be a big week because he's had some rest. <clears throat> I don't know if that's going to help him yeah. with velocity. Right. I, you know. I was going to say that could help him or hurt him. He might not be sharp. Yeah, I mean, you know, Zach Meisel just, just put something up on Twitter as we were talking here. Um, you know, the Marlins, the, the Indians have hit one more home run than the Marlins, and the Marlins haven't played all week. I mean, that's, that's, that's brutal. And they've got to lay off that breaking stuff, the stuff that's out of the zone, and they've got to wait on – the stuff that is, it, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, I was Maeda was just carving them up the other night, and it's like, geez, it was just, it was frustrating. Um, and, and you know, Sonny Gray, like, like I said, pitching tonight. I mean, that guy's got an entire arsenal of stuff, and I'm sure he's reading the scouting report and watching the videos and um, Art of pitching, <laughs> pitching ability, exactly. So uh, you know, uh, you know, they'll see plenty of yellow hammers. But five, look, five and five through ten games, the sky isn't falling. Minnesota clearly looks like the best team in the division, again, and they're very good. The Indians have some catching up to do, but it's not like Minnesota blew them out all weekend. It's not like we can't hang with Minnesota. Come on now. Exactly. And, and, and you know, we were we're, in every one of those games. Like, we're, we're getting the White Sox. at all, like a bloop and a blast in the ninth last night and then, uh, yesterday, and the game's popped. I mean, it's, not, it's not like they were losing seven to one. You was in the tank last night. I mean, it's like, uh, and, and Tim Anderson's injured, so we may have avoided him this weekend, which would be a huge break because he destroys the Indians. But it's just, it's frustrating. And, and, and because the pitching's been there, because, you know, the other night Shane Bieber had, had that lead, and it's like, you got to take him out. You got to protect him. 
but then you only have a yeah. two-run lead. It wouldn't have been nice if it was 5 nothing, and you could have brought in somebody else and saved Karen Jack. But boy, he did a great job. And shout-out to Cam Hill. Cameron, he's done a fantastic job uh, as a young pitcher coming in there and, and getting out. So that's a, another another card in the deck yeah. we could play uh, as and far as the bullpen. To, that's another reason to not thrust hand out there you know, uh, in every single big spot, you know, just to, to get him right. I mean, Cam Hill, Cam Hill's two appearances, he looked very good. Um, I think his, well, first of all, I saw his interview. I heard him on with uh, friends of the show, Ken and Anthony, on 92.3 last week. Oh, it was great. Uh, I, I finally I, got to it. It was great. It was great. And then I heard, and then I saw his interview um, with Andre Knott in the pregame show after he had recorded his first save. If you can't root for Cam Hill, then you, you know, there's something wrong with you. I mean, he, what a great kid. Just, you can tell it's genuine. He appreciates being up in the majors. Um, you know, he, he's worked hard for everything he's had to do. He, he, he said, you know, he, the interview was interesting. One of the things he said was, you know, when he was a kid, his dad never gave him anything. His dad really was hard on him to make him the best. And, uh, you know, sometimes people don't respond to that kind of tough love, and sometimes uh, it, they do. But uh, it, it was—he he just really seemed like a well, just like a grounded, good kid. Yeah. Easy to root for. And I and I hope he's a part of the bullpen for lots of years to come. They were like, they were asking me. He's just an Oklahoma kid, twenty-four years old, and they were like, "So, what do you do for fun? What are your hobbies?" He's like, "I just play baseball." He just he works on his craft. He just wants to play, and uh, those are the type of guys you want uh, in the organization. All right, uh, before we get to the pitching matchups, why don't you tell us about Dr. Ben Hornstein, uh, the Center for Advanced Dentistry. Boy, uh, what a time to be alive to get your teeth cleaned right now. I I have an appointment on Wednesday, actually. I'll be going in and getting my teeth cleaned from the great Sandy. Sandy, who's been cleaning my teeth probably since for 20-something years. Um, I've mentioned this before. You can't find a better dentist on the east side of Cleveland. If you want safety, pro- here, I'll give you a good story. Last week, my wife, your sister-in-law, went in for her appointment. Now, she has uh, allergies, and whatever day it was, they asked her, before she, when she called to tell them she was there, they said, do you have any, they asked her if she had any sort of COVID symptoms, or do you have a cough, do you have this, they, they go down a list of things, do you have it? And she said, you know, I've been coughing a little bit from my allergies. And they had to make a decision on the fly of whether or not to let her in. That's how much they care. And despite that, then you go in when you do get in and you do get your call. You are literally taken to your own pod. They have the art equipment, um, air filtration systems. Everyone's in masks and shields. And the, the, if, if you are worried about safety and about COVID and, and, and you know, everyone wear your mask, please. They take every single possible precaution you can you, you can think of there at the Center for Advanced Dentistry. So if you need a teeth cleaning, if you need a root canal, if you need, uh, uh, you know, a, any sort of dental work, go check them out. Center for Advanced Dentistry at CFAD.net or at CFAD Beachwood on Twitter. They're great Tribe fans. They're great people. And they're, most of all, uh, you know, Dr. Ben is, is the greatest dentist, not only in Northeast Ohio, in all of America. So check him out. All right. So, Todd, let's look ahead to tonight and the rest of the week. The Indians are going to play every day, uh, four with the Reds, three with the White Sox uh, in Chicago. It's kind of a weird schedule. They're going from Minnesota <coughs> to Cincinnati, back home for two days, and then back on the road to Chicago for the weekend series. Um Pitching matchups, I mean, the Indians are going to see some good pitchers here. I mean, Wade Miley's out for the Reds. Remember, they had to pitch Dees. Which is too bad because, you know, I think he's the worst. <laughs> yeah, but he also he also throws garbage, so that might be a break for us. I mean, for how we're – True. I'd almost rather face hard throwers right now. But um, they had Dees Sclafani and Bauer pitched yesterday in a doubleheader, those, those seven-inning doubleheaders in which they beat the uh, unnamed team twice. So tonight, Sonny Gray for the Reds, Zach Plesak for the Indians, and then Tuesday, Shane Bieber against a former Team D's right-hander, Tyler Malley. Um, so that's, I mean, if you, they can't win Tuesday's game, 
They'll never yeah, win. No kidding. Uh, Wednesday, they go back to Cleveland for two with the Reds in this home and home. Mike Clevenger against Luis Castillo, who's nasty, nasty, very good young pitcher, throws hard. And then Thursday, the Reds don't have anybody listed yet, uh, nor do I know where they're going to go with it because, like I said, they pitch two starters Sunday. So unless they let Bauer pitch on three days rest, which would not be surprising. Knowing, I was just going to say, knowing Trevor, he'll be begging for it. He's going to want to pitch in Cleveland against um, – against, um, why am I drawing It'll a blank? Carrasco. It'll be Carrasco. Against Carlos Carrasco, his old buddy. So Carrasco on Thursday against at least to be determined right now, but it could be Bauer on three days rest. You never know. It's it's, it's too bad the rain ruined the potential Clevenger. You know, at one point last week it was lined up to be Clevenger versus Bauer, and they had a great back and forth on Twitter. It's funny if people don't didn't know, they would have thought that those two hated each other. Were really, right? Hate each other, and we're going below oh, the belt. It was just you know they're great friends, and it was. Funny ribbing, as they would say. So uh, I enjoyed it. It was you good. Know, Bauer's been Bauer's just been on fire on oh. Twitter with his his opinions, and I, I he and Rob Manfred. You know, I'd like to get them in a room alone. See what yeah. happens. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, Bauer Bauer wasn't real pleased with how the rainout was handled. Uh, that's been mishandled in, in the unnamed city many many times, but. Um, the unnamed city's media will never say anything about it. Uh, Aaron Savali on Friday against Dylan Cease, the White Sox uh, in Chicago. So Savali and Cease, which I think we... great Dylan Cease. <laughs> correct. Uh, Zach Plesag against Carlos Rodon Saturday afternoon. And then Sunday, a rematch, Bieber and Gilito. So again, the Indians f- uh, f- uh, do not face um, Dallas Keuchel. They'll miss him because he's going to pitch Wednesday I believe against the Brewers, and then uh, Gio Gonzalez it's after after him. So that's what we that's see. The second time they'll, they'll miss him. Yep, yep. So that's that's how it looks. But there's some good arms in there. Like I said, I mean tonight's going to be tough. You know, you're struggling to hit, and you got to face Sonny Gray. I watched him opening day. Uh, he's he's phenomenal. And like I said, Castillo on Wednesday is good. But you know, it's time to wake these bats up. It's time to get get some hits and get some runs. I mean, my goodness, it, it's like. You know, where well, they have two hits yesterday, and they they and they played it a run, and that was it. And the rest of the game, there that's was nothing. That's all we got. One goddamn hit. <laughs> Seriously, like start throwing bats around the shower. It, except there is no showers. Um, you know, right. in, in this in this environment. So we'll, we'll see what happens, man. But long way to go. I'm not panicking yet. We're not going crazy. No, but, no, no. Of course um, not. It's. It's it, listen. It's week to week. At the end of last week, you and I were like, "Yeah, baby, World Series." Woo. Oh yeah, yeah oh yeah. You know? and, and and this week it was after that doubleheader. It was just brutal. I mean, I, when they when they swept that doubleheader against the White Sox, I was like, "Yeah, we're going." They're really, they're on. a really good team. I mean, this, I was very impressed. I mean, they were doing just enough, and no one could hit them, so it wasn't a problem. Actually, that's the thing with this pitching staff. All we need is three or four. You really need to score four runs. You score four runs, you're going to win every the majority of these games. And it's all about taking series. And uh, yeah, just just take some series. Score four runs. Is it that hard? Can't be that hard to score four runs in a baseball game. No, and uh, you know Cincinnati. You know they're, they're for it. There they were supposed to be an offense that was supposed to be lethal. Uh, you know, Castellanos is is waking up. He had two He's home runs, two weekend. home runs yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Suarez has done nothing. Vado's hurt. Mustakas has been good. I watched a lot of the Reds actually. So, but I watch good everything. Scouting by you. I watched a lot. Uh, Christian Cologne made an appearance yesterday. Remember the former Royal, former Kansas City Royal. I think he was a first round draft pick. Yeah, I think he may have been. I think he was the first pick overall in, in his draft. I swear. I think he was the first pick in the draft. Is yeah. that possible? I, I don't know. Was he? Could be. I know he was a first round pick. I, I that I do know. Tribe killer yeah, Matt Davidson is on the uh, Reds, by the way. Oh, he does kill us. He had a walk off homer for the White Sox um, a couple years ago against I think I think John Axford. Maybe does that sound right? Yeah, to you? I think you're right. I think you're right. Reminds me of that br- the uh, Axford mustache rides. Uh, what about the brutal, <laughs> yeah, brutal Stephanie tweet? Good, to have, good to have her back. <laughs> Maybe she's listening. Shout out, shout out to brutal Stephanie. She might be listening. I, I've, legend. I have told her in the past. Hey, check out the podcast. So, all right, dude. Well, uh, big one tonight. Let's let's get it rolling. And uh, like I said, I mean, you're in Cincinnati. I mean, everybody hits there. At least you're supposed to. So hopefully, uh, 
hopefully the bats wake up and they get some wins. Yeah, let's just let's get it going. I, I, I this weekend these games it's it's not even that these games were were uh, bad. They were also very boring. And I I'm here to be excited by Indians baseball. I I, I want more. Can we get some more, please? And I, I love that we it. we spent 35 minutes and we didn't talk about shutting baseball down or COVID. I don't want to do that talk. I, I, don't even let's not even go there. Let's just talk about the games, and I think they're going to keep playing. So let's just make the best of it. You know, Christian Colon was the fourth pick in his draft. Wow! That, yeah, fourth overall pick in uh, uh, in uh, 2007. <laughs> no, sorry, just kidding. Whatever. Wow. He was the fourth overall pick in the 2010 draft. Wow. Sorry. There you go. All right, my friend. We were brought to you by the uh, Center for Advanced Dentistry, of course. Uh, thanks to the folks at WaitingForNextYear.com. Uh, and, uh, Todd, we'll do it again uh, next week. Sounds good. Go try